everything comes to an end. But in the spiritual realm, nothing comes to an end because there's no beginning. It always is. And that's the difference. Material energy, there's no present. It's just the future flowing into the past. And I'll prove it to you. In the future, I'm going to snap my fingers. It hasn't happened yet, but as soon as I did, it's in the past. So where is the present? What we do is we block off a little chunk of future and a little chunk of past and we call it the present, but that's <laughs> not really the present. But in the spiritual realm, there's no past and no future. Everything is eternally present. So this is difficult for people to grasp because it's not within our realm of experience. We've never experienced such a thing. So we have to either accept it on faith or we reject it on, based on our intellect or based on our own experience. You know, such a, a, another realm, how do we know such another realm exists? I know this exists. How do I know another realm exists? Well, you can know. You can experience it. Just like, for example, how many people know whether I'm hungry or not hungry? Nobody knows. <laughs> Only I know. You can bring in Stephen Hawking or I don't care which scientist. They cannot tell whether I'm hungry or not. It's because it's a subjective science. Only I know. And material science is objective science. Subjective science, they have no experience of. They have no education or teaching of subjective science. So the spiritual energy we understand because it's a subjective science. Just like love is a subjective science. Nobody knows who this young lady is in love with, unless she revealed it to the object of her love. But no scientist can do a study or take some instrument and say she's in love to this degree, 70%, 80% or whatever. No, it's a subjective thing completely, subjective science. So just like love is a subjective science, hunger and so many things, so spirituality is a subjective thing and we can experience it. And that's what this Kirtan Yoga is all about, is to experience the other realm of existence. So in this mantra that we just sang, this all made up of only three words, Hare, Krishna, and Rama. But it's put into this, we can call it a formula or a poetry, so that it rhymes and we can sing it. But there's only three words, Hare, Krishna, and Rama. So I'm going to explain the meaning, the nomenclature, the definition of these sound vibrations. So Krishna refers to the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of the Supreme Lord, however, you, however we define him or, or use whatever nomenclature, but the Supreme Intelligence he from who, whom all else has come. In other words, in the beginning there was nothing, so he's beginningless. But when he wants to begin something, he begins it. He's the supreme controller and the cause of all other causes. So that name Krishna, that sound vibration Krishna refers to that consciousness, that living entity that has that supreme consciousness. The, the term Hare refers to that divine love energy that resides in everyone's heart. But as we said earlier, it doesn't always come out divinely. It doesn't come out purely because it's filtered through negativity that's in our heart. But originally, that love is pure. So that Hare is that pure divine love energy in its purest and most divine and perfect and complete form. And Hare, uh, that's Hare, and Rama refers to that 
reservoir of joy and happiness or ecstatic bliss that we experience when we connect to the Supreme Being, the Supreme God, the source of all life and love, through His divine loving energy, then we experience that Rama, that reservoir of joy and happiness. And I like to compare it to electricity. That Hare, that divine love energy is like electricity and it, when it connects to the light, the light goes on. So when you turn the switch, the light goes on and we all get light. Now, if you don't turn the switch, even though everything's there, no light happens. Or if you don't pay your bill, even if you turn the switch, no light happens. So in other words, all the elements have to be correct and proper before it works. Agreed? So similarly, when we, from our heart, we express that divine love energy towards the supreme source of love, then we experience enlightenment. The light goes on within. We become enlightened. And we experience that. We feel it. It's a subjective science. So that's what we're doing in a nutshell for those people who are here for the first time. So I hope that was enlightening. <laughs> <laughs> are there any questions from anybody up to this point? And anything you've heard or seen? <laughs>